Good morning. How are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And I think this is the first video on this channel that I'm not actually going to be doing, but I still wanted to introduce it to you so you knew what was going on. So in this video, Ben Hales is going to walk you through HRC, also known as Holden Resources Calculator. This is an extremely important software for tournament players. So Ben is someone I worked with while writing the Tournament Poker Workbook, and ultimately this is a tool that became very, very important for doing a lot of the extra tournament specific exploration, right? So Flopzilla is still important for this workbook, but because we're talking about tournaments, because we're talking about ICM, this stuff is really, really important. So Ben is going to run you through the software, show you what it is, how to use it, a bunch of little fine tweaks and things that are very, very important for doing exploration with HRC. And without further ado, here's Ben, take it away. Hello and welcome. My name is Ben Hales from postflotpoker.com and I'm here today to present a very short guide on how to use HRC or Hold'em Resources Calculator. There'll be six sections in this video and as you can see we're going to start with how to import hands. This is what the front screen looks like when you open Hold'em Resources Calculator. There's various ways of importing hands or tournaments into the software. Firstly, you'll see in this section, you have the option of importing from your SQL database. If you're a poker tracker user, I believe that this works for Holden manager users. I don't think it works or for me, it certainly doesn't. And I prefer to use the second method, which is from hand history files. You select simply from your database, a tournament that, that you want. This is uh, one, at random from my database and uh, you'll see it loads up in a tab across here there are various tabs you've got your home tab this is what where we start and you can have more than one tab open which can prove very very useful when you're comparing two different situations you can flick between the two I'll show you more of that later inside import 3 as it's labeled there's a front screen with the tournament information. You can click on that and the, the hands appear. You can also go just to the hands by clicking the hands here. And then you've just got all the hands. Because it's a tournament, they are in the, the hand that was played last first. And frequently tournament players are gonna to want to click date once and reverse it. So you get the first hand in the tournament that appears first. There's also import log, which is not important. Um, you can right click on any of these hands if you want to analyze them. So it looks like I've called from the big blind with King Jack off. Maybe I want to explore whether I should have been three betting. I can go and do analysis by right clicking. And I've got different options. Open hand basic, open hand advanced. We're going to explore those in a second. And then there's also a quick analyze option and show history, which I don't intend to go through today. Now there's also a third way I can import a hand into HRC. I'm now going to oscillate back to the home tab. Notice that I can go backwards and forwards between any open tabs across my screen. This is the home place where we can open a basic hand or an advanced hand. And usually when we do this, we're going to be manually inputting the hand data. So it's really useful for live players or just if you want to make up a situation and play around in HRC with manual input. But you can, in either of these, input the data from the clipboard. If you see this section here, paste from clipboard, this is really, really useful for just putting in a specific hand. Now, I'm an HM2 user. If I have a hand open in HR2, I can open the hand viewer. And if you notice here, this is the copy hand to clipboard uh, icon. And I'm going to click that now. And if I now paste from clipboard, notice that the details from the hand immediately go into HRC. So you can see the blinds, you can see the prize money structure and all the various stack sizes at the table. I can click finish and that hand will now be set up in HRC. As you can see, it starts to run. And this can take a little while depending on the complications of the hand. Now I saved you the wait whilst that has just loaded up. It was around 25 seconds, uh, which isn't too bad. 
So we've now imported that single hand and set it up for basic analysis. We're now ready to look in more detail at the manual entry process in HRC. To enter a hand manually into HRC, you can return to the home screen and choose either basic or advanced hand. I'm going to explain the difference between these two in the next two sections. For now, I'm going to click basic hand. And as you can see, there are all of these stack sizes, prizes and blinds that we can import. There's a button here to clear all stacks and you can start afresh. So if you're a live player and you're remembering a situation and you wanted to enter the stacks in, you simply put the data in here and you can have as many players at the table as you want, as you can see, and then the prize structure in here and the blinds and antes. And once you're done, you can click finish. This is surprisingly quick if you have all the data available. Now I want to show you the information that HRC gives you for a basic hand and then an advanced hand. Now if you remember, we loaded up a basic hand already in this tab. So I'm going to go to this tab now and look in more detail at the data that we're presented with. A basic hand always starts at the beginning of the hand. So there's been no prior action and the action is on the player under the gun. In this case, the highlighted player and there are eight players at the table. Another feature of the basic hand in HRC is that there are only push fold options analyzed. That means that in this situation, although the player under the gun has 51 big blinds, HRC is only giving him the option of shoving or folding. If we click here, we go one level deeper in the decision tree and we can see the ranges for the various other players that they should be calling with. You can do that for any of the players. So if the first player folds and the second player raises, these are the calling, these are the calling and three bet shove ranges for the players still to act. You can of course go deeper still to a third layer of depth. And that's as far as HRC goes. It goes to three layers of depth. At the bottom here, you can see that there's the option of looking at a game tree and you'll see the various decisions displayed, starting with the first player under the gun, Sveta. I do think that flow diagrams can be really useful for visualizing the options available and helping them to build ranges for those various options. However, I'm not a big fan of this game tree tab. It doesn't seem very functional and I personally don't use it. There's then the hand history, which of course you're not gonna use. So that is a basic hand. We're now gonna look at an advanced hand and point out some of the differences between this and a basic hand. Setting up an advanced hand in HRC is not a whole load different than setting up a basic hand. In fact, when you click on advanced hand here, the very first screen is exactly the same as we saw for the basic hand. This screen has one difference, and that's the next button at the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is keep all the same hand data that we used in the basic hand and take you through to the next screen on the setup page. Here, we get the option of choosing some of the preflop action. So at the moment, you can see that there's the option for a raise to four big blinds. If you wanted multiple options for raise sizes, you can type them in here. I can put in two big blinds, and now that's an option. If you wanna erase them, you can click there. Let's put in three big blinds. And let's leave the three bet alone. There are also flat call options available. And so rather than just being purely push fold, there are now lots of different action opportunities for all the players at the table. And this is gonna be a more advanced calculation for HRC to perform. If I now click on next one more time, this is the final part of the advanced hand setup where we're able to streamline the preflop action. So if I, for example, want to make the first few players fold and just analyze the options available for the button, I can do it like this. If I want to make one player raise and then another player call and then analyze the action, I can do that. You can basically pick whatever preflop action you want and then once you're happy, 
you can click on finish, which I'm going to do now, and HRC will begin a more lengthy calculation, which I've shortened for you today. And that did take around two minutes, but it is possible to run in the background, so you don't need to worry too much about the load time. It is worth the wait. So we asked HRC in this instance to build us a, a limping range, a, just a calling range, and a raise to three big blinds. And these are the two ranges it has built for us, um, together with how profitable each of the hands in those ranges are. If we look at the raising range and go one level deeper, we can see the recommended responses that it gives us. It's giving a call option and a three bet option um, for both the small blind and the big blind. Okay, so you can see the various recommended ranges. Once again, you can go one decision further and look at the ranges for the third level of decision making. So an advanced hand is gonna be suitable for deeper stacked situations where you do want to compare the option of perhaps building a raise fold range and a raise call range and you're not just purely looking at push fold spots. It's also just really, really useful for getting rid of some of the preflop action to streamline what you want HRC to do. I really recommend using the advanced hand setup, especially if you are not importing from a database and you're manually inputting hands. I'm now gonna talk briefly about the layout of HRC. It's very straightforward, but if you are a new user, listening now will make you more comfortable more quickly with the software. Now you pretty much know already the home screen, but here it is again. If you want to open a basic or advanced hand, you can also use this shortcut here, and there are various keyboard shortcuts as well. Import, there's a little icon here, and there's even the option here of file new, file import, and you can explore some of these features as well, including the help. When we're in a hand, note that everything is customizable in terms of layout. You can move this around, you can minimize and, and then re-maximize like this. So you can play around with it if you wish. The, the layout is uh, not set in stone and that's a nice thing. I don't have a huge amount to say about the range chart itself. It's pretty self-explanatory with the dark green representing the high amounts of profit and the darker the red, the least profitable hands. Um, let's just get back the uh, outline. Okay, this section might need a bit of explaining. So clearly we've got the players that are left in the tournament with their various stack sizes in the first column here. Uh, they're arranged by position, but you can, of course, ar arrange them by chip leader, etc. The second column is interesting. This is the equity in the prize money pre-flop. This is where we can do some ICM analysis, look at who's under the most pressure, who has the most equity in the prize money to lose, etc. So this feature is definitely nice for uh, thinking about the ICM implications and not just focusing purely on the uh, chip stacks. Um, pre stands for pre-blinds being posted and post is for post blinds being posted. So that's the most important feature of the outline is learning to think in terms of equity in the prize money. Now this video is very much a user guide rather than a strategy video. Um, so I'm not gonna go into great detail on editing ranges, but I think it's important to show you how to do it because this is an important feature for you learning about optimal ranges. Okay, so let's assume that the player highlighted is shoving optimally with 35.1% of his hands in this spot and it folds to Edgar who calls with this range as a game theory optimal range. Okay, that's great. But what if we don't believe that the shover is shoving this range? What if we think he's really tight? Well, we can edit the range. And to do that, we right click and choose edit range. And then we choose a range that we think this player would shove with. Maybe it's a bit tighter, maybe it's 25%. And of course you can customize this exactly as you wish. 
and click on OK and it locks that range in and we can then go to Edgar and say well okay now given that that's the case what's the best response so right click and best response and it now changes our range to 20.4 percent and you can see just how brilliant and magical this program really is you can fully customize your opponent's ranges and you can see the difference in how you should be reacting when you're playing against very loose players who are shoving very wide or if you're in a, a different spot where players are very tight and it's absolutely incredible how much you can learn by playing around with these ranges. I've learned a bunch about where I'm being too tight and where I'm being too loose and how to adjust my preflop ranges optimally to account for varying opponent profiles. I really hope that this video has helped you as a new user of HRC and inspired you to use some of its glorious features. My name's Ben Hales. Thanks very much for listening. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. I know this was pretty short, pretty right to the point, but that's ultimately what we need when we're using a brand new software, right? There's going to be lots and lots of nuances, lots of awesome in-depth things that you can do with HRC, but this gets you started so that way you know what the heck you're doing with this software. Thank you so much for Ben for helping out. And by the way, if you're looking for how to actually put this stuff to use more, get the workbook. The tournament final tables workbook is available now, splitsuit.com slash final. Again, Ben helped me write it. All of these are are tournament spots that you're going to need to explore and know like the back of your hand. The overall emphasis is hand reading, but ultimately when you pair that with something like HRC, one HRC is going to help you understand the ranges a little bit better, especially in some of these brief up all in situations, but ultimately it's going to help you take a way more technical approach to your strategy, which is going to be super helpful at the end of the day. So as always, if you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you guys back soon with a brand new video. And in the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.